How you guys doing? Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, let me get set up here real quick. I have an iPad and I'm thinking I'm gonna lay it on that. No, I don't have to, no slide. This is the only slide I made because I was like, you know, you guys have Bibles, you can open up your Bibles, look along with me. As we go through some scripture, I'm gonna like repeat it a couple of times so that you can, you know, look it up. We really won't be going over a crazy amount, but um, let me just introduce myself. My name is Chris Carpio. I'm a pastor uh, in Randolph at NetCong. Um, and this is my beautiful wife, Gloria, right here, always along my side to support me. Um, so thankful that she's here with me too. We actually took our engagement photos like not far from here. So that was pretty cool because when I was like, oh, what? We were on the street, like taking those photos. Um, so yeah, just so you guys know, I'm a pretty laid back guy. I like to laugh every once in a while, but I also am a pretty vulnerable dude. And I think that in order for us to be able to kind of walk through the word together, we need to be vulnerable with one another. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing some things about me because, you know, who am I that you come up here, that I come up here and like talk, obviously I'm speaking on the authority of the word of God. Um, but at the same time, I want you guys to know that like my heart behind what I say is very true very genuine. It's something that I've seen impact my own life. Um, and so I'm going to share some of those stories as we kind of go through this. Um, and uh, the first kind of like passage that I, I want to go over um, is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. I'm sure you guys have become somewhat familiar with this passage, right? I'm sure many of the speakers have come up and kind of like started off with this. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing because it's really where uh, the, the root of what I'm going to be talking about comes from. So it's Galatians chapter five, verses 22 through 23. Uh, and before we really get into everything, I just want to go ahead and pray and dedicate the rest of this time to the Lord. So Emily, Father, uh, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to um, speak to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, Lord, I thank you for their desire to spend uh, their Wednesday night learning more about you. God, I pray that, uh, as I speak, you would empty me of myself, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit uh, would be the one to speak through me, allow every word to come out of my mouth to, to be uh, from you for us, Lord. I pray that you soften each of our hearts, Lord, my own and, and also my brothers and sisters, and allow for us to be uh, vulnerable, allow us to be reflective, allow for your word to touch our hearts and for our lives to be truly changed uh, by the words that you have for us. We give the rest of this tonight to you, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so let's read this passage together. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such things. There is no law, right? I actually love that last part, like against such things, there is no law, because that means we can do this as much as we want to, all of these things, right? And within this passage, we read about the outpouring of God's spirit. Like these are the fruits of the spirit. When we have this, this is like what he pours out onto us and what he desires to pour out for us to pour out onto others. But um, what comes from the spirit of God, right? It's the love it's the joy, it's the peace, it's the patience, it's the kindness, it's the goodness, it's the faithfulness, it's the gentleness. These are all things that, if we're all honest with ourselves, right, can be really hard to, like, always be pouring out of ourselves. But these are the things that God wants us to pour out, right? These are the fruits of God's spirit and the attributes that God would love to see pour out of our own lives. And as I kept, you know, preparing for today, um, I was praying about a place in my life where I felt uh, God ch kind of changing my heart from one that was harsh to one that was gentle, right? A place that in my life that was like really sharp, really hardened towards someone. Uh, and then God just showed me the fruit of it being gentle. And the more I thought about this, the more my dad kind of came up into my mind as I was praying about this. Um, and this is kind of where the vulnerability comes in, right? So you guys don't know me, but you're going to get to know me pretty well by the end of this. Um, so when I was three, my dad left my family, right? Uh, he left my, my mom. My mom was a single mom for a really long time. 
And maybe some of you guys can relate to that, but um, he came in and out of my life like a lot, you know, like very, very frequently, you know, it'd be like a year and then he'd come back and then maybe two years and then he'd come back again, that kind of thing. And he was in and out up until my sophomore year. And then um, throughout that time, really what, what kind of happened was my heart would be breaking and then sharpening, breaking and then sharpening. And all of his words that I ever heard from him felt sharp. All of his actions that he had towards me felt sharp. I was very bitter. I was very angry. My heart was like aggressive towards him. However, right over the course of my adult years, especially while I was in college, uh, God began to work in my heart. He helped me to see how the healing in my relationship with my dad wouldn't come from uh, a knife-shaped heart, but instead it would come through the extension of the love that God has for me being extended onto my dad. But this would only come from the posture of gentleness, as well as obviously the dependency of the whole, on the Holy Spirit in my relationship with him. So that's my vulnerability to you. And here's where you have some vulnerability that's kind of required of you as well, which is the question that I have for you today. And I want you to ask yourself, would Jesus consider you to be a gentle person? Would Jesus consider you to be a gentle person? And that's something I want you to be like really honest with yourself about. Um, I know, at least for me, sometimes like the easiest thing to do is kind of just lie to myself and justify, you know, my own actions or say, yeah, I'm like gentle, like 25% of the time. So obviously that's like good enough, right? Uh, Jesus would maybe consider me gentle during that time, but really like, I want you guys to like ask yourself that question. Um, it doesn't have to be something you have to give yourself an answer now, but like write it down somewhere or like think about it throughout the week and allow it to be something that you meditate on because Jesus is like view of you is ultimately what's most important. Not how people see you, but Jesus knows you in and out. He knows every aspect of your life. And for you to have a confidence in being able to say, you know, Jesus does see me as like a gentle person. And I know he would, because I know he sees every aspect of my life. I think that's something really important in our spiritual formation right? As we're growing as Christians, whether you're a very young Christian or whether you've been a Christian for a long time, gentleness is something that should pour out from us. So to help you, to help inform your understanding of what it means to holistically and biblically be a gentle person, we're going to look at three different aspects of a gentle, uh, of gentleness, of the fruit of gentleness, right? So three different aspects of the fruit of gentleness. I'm a three-point pastor, all right? It's, it's how I am, as how I was taught by my mentors. So it's, that's what you guys are going to experience today, right? Um, so the first one is Jesus's gentleness. The second point is our gentle reception. And then the third point is our gentle expression, all right? So one is just kind of focusing on Jesus. The second is focusing on our reception of gentleness of the fruit of gentleness and then our third is the expression of the fruit of gentleness all right so track along with me as we go through that let's look at our first point jesus's gentleness and we're going to be in matthew chapter 11 verse 29 matthew chapter 11 verse 29 all right so i'll give you a second to turn there all right so this is what it says Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So this is Jesus speaking, right? These are words from Jesus' mouth saying, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You see, whenever we're looking at anything in Scripture, it's always important to first look at how God interacts with truths that we're reading about within scripture. In our case right now, right, it's, it's about uh, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the goodness, the faithfulness. Uh, how do we see God express these things or how do we see him respond to these? Right? That's what we're going to be looking at in this point. So when it comes to gentleness, we see that Jesus embodies this fruit of the spirit. He says that he is gentle and low. 
Like Jesus is gentle and lowly, but in what context? And how can we learn from this? Here's the thing, like, I absolutely love asking questions. You know, it's kind of to a detriment at times. You know, Gloria's like, can you just like stop asking me so many questions? But I just can't help it. I love going deeper and deeper and deeper to really get to the root of something and be able to come to understand that. And that's exactly how I approach scripture as well. So um, here, Jesus is saying that his yoke or his teachings are gentle and lowly, right? His teachings are gentle and lowly. They provide rest for the soul of the lost and the broken. So here's my question to you again. More questions, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever carried anything for so long, feeling as if no one understood what it was that you were hiding and carrying? And then one day you finally spoke it out loud to someone else. You see, for me, even in that moment, that being able to talk to someone else, talk to someone else about what it is that I've been carrying on my own, in that moment, I feel a great sense of relief. Another example, right? So for me, when I was, I remember going to one of my fellow pastors and expressing all of my insecurities about my calling. This is when I first started ministry. I probably did this like 15 times just because I was like, ah, am I really supposed to be the one to do this? I, I talked about how I had this really broken upbringing and how I hadn't lived the life that I thought God had expected those to live, uh, that he called to ministry. And I remember breaking down, literally just breaking down before him crying. And he was basically, I remember his extremely gentle response. This is basically what he said. He said, it's not who you were, but it's who God is shaping you to be. It's not who you were, but it's who God is shaping you to be. And this gentle yoke, this is the gentle yoke of our Jesus. This is the gentle yoke of the Jesus that we serve. So what burden are you carrying? This is a time to be real with you. Ask yourself today. What burden are you carrying? What have you had on your shoulders your whole life that you've never let anyone else see? You know who understands this more deeply than anyone is Jesus. Is it betrayal? Is it abuse? Is it grief? Is it anxiety? Is it fear? Invite Jesus into your life. Invite Jesus into this struggle. You see, a, a yoke, and I'm sure some of you guys know this, especially you who grew up in church, right? Whenever you're talking about this yoke thing, a yoke pairs two ox together. And it allows for Jesus to bear your burdens with you as he speaks to you. If I were to put a yoke on and someone else were to be on the other side of it, I would not be carrying the load on my own and they would not be carrying the load for me. Rather, we would be sharing this burden together. And along the way, I would be able to speak with this person that is helping me bear this load. That is what Jesus desires to do with you. His words are true, they're life-giving, and they're gentle. He will restore you. But in order for him to do that, we need to look at our second aspect of gentleness, which is our gentle reception. Turn with me to James chapter 1, verse 21. James chapter 1, verse 21. And this is what it says. It says, therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness, in other words, gentleness, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Receive with meekness, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Here's another question. All right. How do you listen to others? Like, how do you listen to them? When someone speaks to you, do you feel like a bunch of like attacks kind of coming at you, right? Like they're like throwing, like throwing knives at you kind of thing. Or do you first process their words before kind of passing judgment on what their heart's intent really is? Think about that. Here's another personal example. Um, so Gloria and I have been married for six months, right? Yeah, all right. Six months, a big deal, right? <laughs> One day I'll be like, 50 years and everyone would immediately be like, yeah. 
six months. Yeah, I, you know, I get it. it's not that long, but hey, you know, it's a journey. Um, but right, it wasn't all smooth sailing for six months. All right, we we got home, stepped into the real world after a honeymoon, and for like the first month, it was like every day. I remember it being extremely difficult for the both of us. Like we had a really hard time communicating. And it wasn't like, it was like everything that I said or she said would result in some kind of fight. And we couldn't seem to communicate with each other. And the reason for this was because of the way that we were listening to each other. We both assumed that the words coming from the other person were hostile, meant to tear one another down. But that was far from the truth, right? We didn't want to fight with one another. We didn't want to tear one another down but our ears were in defense mode. Our ears were taking every word with hostility. And in order for us to overcome this, we needed to have ears that gently received the words of the other. This same principle is true in our relationship with Jesus. When you open the Bible, you will read many hard truths. I'm sure many of you know this, right? You'll be faced with words that call you to live a life that's different than the, than the one you may want to live. And I'm sure many of you guys know this as well, because this isn't unique to just you. This isn't just a you experience or just a me experience. We all face the reality of our brokenness when we look at the word of God. But we must, and this is super important, we must receive it with gentle ears. Jesus's intentions aren't to hurt you. They aren't to upset you. They aren't to confuse you. Jesus' desire is for you to grow in your relationship with him. And when you have a gentle reception of these gentle truths, you'll find greater growth than you've ever known. That is 100% true. And this is not only true for your relationship with Jesus, but also for your relationship with those around you right? Whether that be your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your fiance, or your wife, or your husband, wherever you guys are in life, right? Which brings us to the last aspect of gentleness, which is our gentle expression. Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5.16. Kind of feel like a professor right now. Maybe I could like do this like a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Galatians 5:16 says, "But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh." Again, it says, "But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh." So what does this look like? That's kind of one of the questions that I love because Oftentimes, me growing up in the church, you know, I've, I've been a believer since I was seven years old. I was in ShopRite. My mom came up to me. She was like, do you want to accept Jesus Christ as your savior? And we were like in the bread aisle or something like that. And I was just like, yeah. And from that moment, Jesus was my hero, you know. Um, but then I grew up kind of hearing things like this. And they can seem really conceptual. So my question always is, what does this look like? What does it look like to walk by the spirit, because if we're talking about gentleness, it, it really means to listen to one another with a gentle ear, but it also means restoring one another with a gentle spirit. This is what Galatians 6, 1 says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. This is like a actual application of the passage that you read just a couple of verses earlier in the book of Galatians. So I want us to take a second collectively, right? And put on the yoke of Jesus and see a moment where he expressed gentleness. So we're going to step out of Galatians for a second and we're going to go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, starting in verse 3. John chapter 8.
All right. So this is what it says. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So, what do you say? They said this to test him that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more, he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older one. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. And Jesus stood up and said to her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Now, which response to this woman's sin do you think had a more profound impact on her life? Was it the wrath of the Pharisees? Or was it the gentle forgiveness and direction offered by Jesus? Here's what's true. As humans, we will all fail at showing gentleness to those around us and our dogs. We're all going to fail, right? Well, my challenge to you this week is that I want you to be really intentional about how you listen to people about how you respond to people. Take note of the moments when you fail to be gentle towards them and ask yourself, what would have the result, what would have been the result of that moment had I been gentle rather than whatever else you chose to be? In doing this, this is going to help you in your spiritual formation as a believer in Christ. You're going to be able to reflect you're going to be able to ask questions, which we love here. At least I love, and now I'm here. So now we love here, right? And you're going to be able to grow because you're going to say, hey, I, I chose not to be gentle in that moment. And because of that, now I'm in a fight with this person. Now I've sinned against this, against this person. Or, you know, they were actually trying to be nice to me and speak truth into my life, but I listened with a harsh ear and became defensive instead. And so now, again, I'm in a quarrel with this person. What would have been the outcome had I had a gentle ear first? Had I actually tried to listen to them first before assuming what their intentions may have been? And maybe that's you with the word as well, right? Maybe lately you've been opening up the word of God and you've just been like, I don't care what you have to say, God, because I know you're just trying to dictate my life or something like that, right? You're, you're taking aggressive ears even towards the word of God, or you're opening the Bible and you're becoming immediately suspicious of what it has to say. And you say, this can't be true. These are really aren't the words of God. No, have a gentle ear. Receive the word of the Lord. Put on his yoke and allow for him to walk beside you. Walking in the spirit is walking and abiding in Christ. Like that's your verse. I, it's actually funny. I thought your verse was going to be the Galatians verse. And then it was the John verse. And I was like, oh, wow, that's like a really long verse to memorize. For those of you guys that memorize it, great job. But for real, right? Like that is my encouragement to you. I really want you guys to have like this practical kind of view of the spirit of gentleness, of the fruit of gentleness, because that's what God wants us to carry. Um, I didn't want to just come up here and give you like a bunch of, you know, academic kind of understandings of the word study and everything like that. I, I really desire for the people of God, including myself, to learn how to be even more gentle because it's going to help you in the way that you share your faith with others. It's going to help you in the way that you um, grow your relationship with others. It's going to help you in your relationship with God ultimately, which is the most important. Uh, so I really appreciated coming here and being asked to do this because like I said at the beginning, this was really making me reflect on my relationship with my dad because it had been so harsh for so long and to kind of close that loop for you guys. 
um, my dad and I, after shifting my heart from being one that was harsh and I had hard ears towards him and sharp words towards him, um, I began to be gentle towards him. I began to extend the love of Christ and extend the forgiveness uh, that Christ has offered me. And on my wedding day, uh, I like FaceTimed him because he lives in Guatemala. So he wasn't going to be able to come, but I FaceTimed him and I was like, hey, dad, like, I want to let you know I'm getting married today. And his mind was blown because our relationship just had not been like that before. Uh, but I was the first one of his kids and he has two other kids beside me um, that he was able to see on their wedding day. And my relationship with him has grown tremendously because of that. I mean, it's still not perfect by any means, but it has grown in a way that it never would have had I chosen a bitter heart, had I chosen an aggressive heart, instead of extending the gentle fruit that Christ has afforded me. So keep those things in mind. I'm sure many of us have relationships that are somewhat similar to that, uh, that we can practice and stretch ourselves because it's not easy, right? It's not easy to do that kind of thing, uh, but it's important. So, Everybody get me? Yes. Cool. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time together, God. I thank you for, um, even just in this short time, how my relationship has grown with my brothers and sisters in this room. Um, Lord, I thank you for how uh, you've been uh, moving in this room. Your Holy Spirit has been moving in our hearts, uh, has been working in us. And Lord, I pray that that continues to be true. Help us to really know what it looks like to um, bear the fruit of gentleness, to walk in your spirit, to be yoked with you, to be not so prideful that we feel we need to carry all of our burdens, Lord. You desire to do that with us. You find joy in doing that with us. And God, I just pray that um, you would humble us, Lord. You would allow for us to be vulnerable before you and ourselves. To God, I pray that um, my brothers and sisters tonight would even feel so compelled tonight before they go to sleep to uh, just pray and uh, confess things before you. In, the, in this spirit, Lord, and that they would uh, desire to see this growth in their own life. I thank you again for this time, and I pray that you protect um, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I pray that you would uh, give them the endurance to finish up the semester, that you would give them, give them the memory to remember everything that they're studying, that you would protect their health in the midst of stress, uh, you protect their minds, and uh, that you would um, allow for them to continue to live a life that is pleasing to you and that they would not grow weary of doing good. And I pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank you, Chris. Again, I think that deserves another round of applause because your first time and that was amazing. Okay. So in terms of events coming up, we have I forgot to take out the, the slides so you guys can tell I'm stressed. Um, <laughs> we have small groups tomorrow, uh, ladies group fellowship night Friday. Guys group Monday and in his name prayer group on Tuesday. And then next week we'll be back to hear Ralph talk about self-control. <laughs>